Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shane Squark, and on behalf of the Market Technicians Association, I'd like to welcome you to another webcast as part of the MTA's Educational Web Series. Today, January 16, 2011, we're joined by Mr. Ross Beck as he teaches us about the Gartley Trading Method. Ross Beck, FCSI, is the Vice President of Business Development for Market Analyst International and the author of The Gartley Trading Method by Wiley Trading. Ross is a member of the Market Technicians Association and has received both the Derivatives Market Specialist and Fellow of the Canadian Securities Institute designations from the Canadian Securities Institute. Your participation in today's webcast will be worth one MTA Continuing Education credit to be automatically added to your account. As always, we welcome your questions throughout the presentation, but remind you that in the interest of time, we will not get to them until the very end. And with that said, without any further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Ross Beck. All right. Thank you, Shane, and uh, thank you to the MTA for having me uh, talk to you about uh, the Gartley Trading Method. My name is Ross Beck. I live in Washington State and uh, right on the border of Canada, so I was born in Vancouver. If you hear me say a few funny words like uh, again and about, you know where I was born. Um, we move on to the next slide here. Uh, a little bit about my background. I've been trading since the 90s. Um, author of the Gartley Trading Method book by Wiley Trading. Uh, this, this pattern has served me well over the years. Uh, what we'll be doing is getting into uh, the history of the pattern itself and um, the application made by um, other authors um, and, and my own spin on it going forward. I'm a member of the MTA as well, and um, so is uh, H.M. Gartley uh, received an award from the MTA uh, after he passed away. And um, he wrote a book in 1935 entitled Profits in the Stock Market. Now, if you think about what was going on in the United States in 1935, it was the Great Depression, and he was publishing a book as unpopular as the stock market at the time. What's really interesting about this is the book was very expensive, and this really got my attention. When I heard he wrote a book uh, um, about about this uh, uh, about trading stocks, I thought this this is kind of unpopular in the 30s. But what's really interesting is the cost of the book. It sold for $1,500 in 1935, the equivalent of three brand new cars. So um, this this got my attention. That the the other things that got my attention was people were talking about this Gartley pattern, specifically Larry Pesavento was talking about this Gartley pattern, and he's referring to a pattern in, in Gartley's uh, original book here, Profits in the Stock Market. Now, if you, you can pick up um, Profits in the Stock Market, it's still uh, published by WD Gann Publishing. Nikki Jones uh, owns this. And um, this is what it says about what Gartley referred to as one of the best trading opportunities. He said, in eight out of ten cases wherein each of these specific conditions occurs, a rally which will provide a worthwhile profit ensues. In the other two cases, only small losses have to be taken. Well, I don't know about you, but when I saw that, I'm like, wow, this is, this is definitely a, a trading system I'd like to trade, 8 out of 10, and, and when you do lose, it's not Hurricane Katrina. Um, so, so this got my interest. So um, starting in the 90s, I, I really started pursuing this and wanted to find out a little bit more about the Gartley pattern. As I mentioned, uh, the one that really made this popular was Larry Pesavento. Uh, he wrote a book. Uh, it, uh, actually, a couple of books in the 90s, and, and we'll be covering off um, the development of the Gartley pattern in the 90s, but just uh, um, leading up to the publication of those, those books by Larry, he, he met a uh, fellow Don Mack in the Investment uh, Book Center in, in Los Angeles, and, uh, um, and, and Don had this huge library of trading books, and Larry said to him, uh, what, what, Don, which, which book should I read? And... Don Mack, of all those books, pulled out profits of the stock market and handed it to Larry Pesavento, and, and after that, Larry was sold. Now, the interesting thing in this book, it's a big book, but today when people refer to the Gartley pattern, they're really referring to what Gartley called one of the best trading opportunities. In this book, Gartley doesn't stand up and say, hey, this is called the Gartley pattern. No, he doesn't do that. He basically talks about a, a, a pattern that he referred to as one of the best training opportunities. So 
if you type in Gartley pattern on Google, you're probably going to get a lot of different uh, versions of what the Gartley pattern is. So why don't we go back to the book and see what it really looks like based on, well, let's call it Gartley's Gartley. In 1935, this is what he referred to as one of the best trading opportunities. So you can see we have two examples. On the left, in the green box, we have a bullish trade setup. On the right, we have um, an illustration of a bearish trade setup. To keep things simple, there's going to be a lot of different labels I'll be throwing at you here. And for Elliott Wave um, people, it, it can get kind of confusing <laughs> when we talk about ABCs. But um, if you look at the labeling here on the left, there's example A on the left and B on the right. And then in this bullish example, we can see there's a, the, uh, uh, the label of an A at this high, a B at this low, and the C at, at this, uh, the top of this little bit of a rally here, and then it comes down, and you can see where it says buy. That's going to be our bullish trade setup. You notice also that Garley puts a um, stop just below the low over here. So this is an example of what Gartley's Gartley really looked like. Now, as we go forward, you'll see how it changes over time. But So this book was in publication for decades, and Larry Pesavento starts uh, talking about the Gartley pattern. He called it the G222 because uh, if you notice on the top left corner, it says 222. It's on page 222, this illustration. So Larry called the G222. Now, in Astro Cycles, a trader's perspective, we see this illustration, and this is in the 90s now. On the left, we have a sell signal. On the right, we have a buy. Once again, let's try and focus on the buys here because it will be easier to understand how it evolves. Now, the labels have changed a little bit. Do you notice how there still is this big downward trend move, right, just before it hits the A point? That was definitely something that was in Gartley's original material. It hits the A, and then there's a rally to the B, and then it comes down to the C point, and that's a, that's a bullish trade setup. We're going to be a buying at C. Also, B, the BC leg, if you want to call it that in this example, the BC leg, it, can you notice that if it, it looks very much like a simple ABC correction in Elliott wave terms? This was something that was added, um, and, and it's an important um, a detail that we shouldn't miss out on. Uh, Larry kind of took that original garlic pattern, and tweaked it, and made it a little bit better with Fibonacci ratios and looking for the A equals C symmetry of, of an Elliott wave correction. Okay, so this is uh, in Astro Cycles. The next book uh, Larry published was um, Planetary Harmonics of Speculative Markets. And this is, this is what it looks like here. Now we have the labels are a little bit different. You notice um, the piece that's missing from this equation, you notice how I've, I've made this. Uh, here's a bullish example again. But you notice how the downward trend that precedes this, this um, pattern is missing now. I've graded out. You can see it just um, slightly there. That is now removed. And now we're simply looking at one leg here, the XA move, AB, BC, and CD. So we have new labels. We have more of an abbreviation of the original pattern. And also Larry is now starting to apply Fibonacci ratios to the pattern. He uses two, the 0.618 and the 0.786 Fibonacci retracement. He calculates those retracements based on the XA move. So starting from this low here at X up to the A, those two data points are what you will be using to calculate your, your Fibonacci retracement. The assumption is the D point should stop at one of those two levels. So really what you're looking for here is two things. Number one, you want to see symmetry between the AB leg 
and the CD leg. If you see that symmetry where they're equal to each other, which is a very common feature of a simple ABC correction in Elliott wave terms, if you see that symmetry between those two legs, and you can do a projection on, on, on the end of wave C if you're an Elliott wave guy, or in, in this case the end of the D, where, where the D point would be, if that projection lands close to one of those Fibonacci numbers, you have a valid bullish Gartley um, pattern in this example. So let's say we do a price extension on, on the AB leg, and we project it from the C point. It will give us a line down here near one of these Fibonacci levels, and that's going to give us a bias as to where the market's going to reverse. It's going to reverse typically at one of these two levels, but if your end of wave C projection lands closer to 618, then it's a 618 Gartley. If it lands closer to 786 retracement, then it's the 786 um, Gartley. So let's, let's keep going here. We're going to look at the next step. We're going to compare the original pattern with Larry's pattern with Elliott Wave now. So here's the original pattern. Remember this, this first uh, example here. The, we'll keep focusing on the bullish examples. We have a downward trend in Gartley's original material, followed by a pop-up up to this point C. And the rally, the BC rally in Gartley's original pattern, you notice how that rally is bigger than the previous rallies in this decline. Can you see that? Now, going forward, um, Larry Pesavento took just the last little bit of what was in the illustration here and put some new labels on it. We got X over here, which is going to be the same as this B point over here. Um, so we have an X point, A, B, C, D. We want to see symmetry between the A, B leg and the C, D leg. And you want to see the D point end at a Fibonacci ratio. So this is typically the box on the right-hand side, the green box, Larry's example of the Gartley pattern. Is typically, when people discuss the Gartley pattern, they're talking about that specific pattern. However, let's review, revisit what Gartley was talking about in his original material. He actually described a decline that preceded this X, A, B, C, D move. So that's what I've illustrated here. And I've put some Elliott Wave labels on it, too, um, we, we don't see any Elliott, mention of Elliott Wave in Gartley's original material, but you can imagine, just like, lo looking at the original um, diagram that Gartley showed, is you could put some Elliott Wave labels on there. It does definitely look like an impulsive move down before the Gartley pattern. Um, so I've put, taken the liberty of putting some labels on here, Wave 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down to the low. And then there's a pop-up. Remember, this rally is bigger in price and time than the previous rallies, and that's what we see here. And that's very typical of a wave one, right, when you have a rally bigger in time and price versus these other rallies. Following that, what we think is wave one, wave two typically subdivides into some sort of correction. And here, the typical uh, look would be a simple ABC correction. And that, can you see how this all ties in with Elliott Wave, which is quite interesting. This fascinates me. In fact, you'll see towards the end of the presentation that I, I've simplified my, my Gartley analysis where it conforms to Elliott Wave to such an extent where I don't really look for wave counts. I simply look for an impulse followed by a correction. And that's really what a Gartley pattern is. If you look at that, the example that, uh, here on the right-hand side in the box, the XA move is the impulse. The ABCD portion is the correction. So we're just looking for an impulse followed by a correction. In that case, we'd be a buyer at D, and hopefully the trend will reassert itself. And the exciting thing about this is if we buy at uh, the end of wave two over, over here, um, we're going to be hitting wave three, and I think that's what we all want to be doing. The other thing that Gartley mentioned in his book was the fact that this would very much resemble, he doesn't say trade the Gartley pattern like I mentioned, he said this is one of the best trading opportunities, and he said it looks very much like a head and shoulders or double top, double bottom. 
if you look at this example here on the bottom of the slide, that could very well be a inverse head and shoulders. However, if you just imagine drawing a neckline from um, the end of wave four over here on the left to the end of wave one over here, um, you would wait. You would have to wait before you bought uh, in this example when it breaks above the neckline. And um, so if you were buying here at the end of wave two, you're getting in a lot earlier, which is, which is a good thing about the garlic pattern. Also, as wave two starts to approach this, this X point over here, uh, it's a retest of a low. So it looks very much like a double bottom as well. So those are the, the patterns that Gartley mentions in his original material as well. So now, in 2004, I started compiling this information on, on how the Gartley pattern has evolved over time, and uh, I started writing uh, the Gartley trading method. It was published in uh, um, last year, 2010. And in the Gartley trading method, I've identified not just the typical X, A, B, C uh, Gartley pattern, but I'm, I'm starting to use uh, the, the move that precedes the X, A, B, C, D um, pattern. And so we've had to categorize the Gartley pattern into two specific types of patterns. Most people, when they talk about a Gartley pattern, it could be either or. It could be a trend continuation Gartley, or it could be a trend reversal Gartley. No one really knows. No one ever talks about the fact that Gartley had this um, significant trend move before the pattern. Um, so what I've done in the book is I categorize them into two categories. Number one, trend continuation Gartley. The rules for that simply are the ones that we know and love already. What you see in the box, this smaller box is really what most people are looking for. They're looking for trend continuation Gartleys. They don't have a lot of rules um, when, when they look for these. They just simply do a Fibonacci retracement. They do a price extension. And... Um, and trade those. The other category of Gartley is the trend reversal Gartley. Now, this is the one that I like the most, and I think you'll have to agree with me, because if you have something that looks like what you see on the screen here in the bigger green square, you have a good um, a chance that if you're right on this trade, if you're buying at the D point, you could very well be trading a wave three in Elliott wave terms. How do we know that? Well, because we have this significant trend down here. Remember, the XA leg is bigger in price and time compared to, say, this uh, wave two and wave four on this decline. And so that means that potentially this is a significant low here at the X point. Then following the XA leg, you have the correction that looks like a simple ABC correction in L8 wave terms. And that means if this is complete right here, we're good to go on wave three, which is nice. Now, how are you going to identify this leg prior to the Gartley pattern? Well, I've come up with the, the label. I've added one more a label here. Uh, Larry came up with X, A, B, C, D. Um, so I just put a W in front of the X because that's the letter before X. So um, there's the, the label for the trend would be the W, X leg. And if it looks like a trend, if it looks like an impulse, if it looks like a five-wave sequence, that would qualify it for a WX leg. So what we're doing, we're just adding one more component to uh, the Gartley pattern, and this conforms closer to the original material than, than what it's evolved into. Now, there's one other uh, rule that Gartley talked about in regard to this pattern that a lot of people overlook. Gartley talks about volume extensively in profits in the stock market, and he also applies the volume rules to the original Gartley material, what he called one of the best trading opportunities on page 222. Now, I'm just going to give you a couple of slides here to show you what it typically looks like, uh, what, what Gartley would really call Gartley's. I put the Gartley labels on here. Remember, he called this um, A over here, B over here. And then I've also quoted him from Profits in the Stock Market. He says, if you get down to the B point here, he says, 
if the activity has shown a definite tendency to dry up. So now what we're doing when we trade Gartley's, we have to start looking at volume at the bottom of the chart. So plot volume underneath your um, bar chart. And I have a trend line here showing um, that the volume has decreased going into this low at B. Okay, so that's one aspect of the volume uh, equation that we're looking for. We'll move on to the next slide. And remember, Gartley had A, B, and then C over here. And uh, when we get up to the C, he said what you want to look for is with volume expanding on the upside. So this new rally, if you want to call it wave one, you want to see, first of all, the decline in volume going into B, but then you want to see volume increasing going into the C points. These are the original Gartley labels that we have here. Now moving forward, the final part of the volume that uh, Gartley is looking for, he says, with volume drying up again, as the market goes down from C, remember, we're not in this purest form of Gartley, he wasn't even talking about a simple ABC correction as being part of this last leg, and he didn't talk about Fibonacci ratios. So he was focusing on the volume, and you can see uh, three phases here. Volume dries up, expands, and that dries up again as it goes down to this point here. This would be a buy signal. If you look at the original Gartley material, what would be the entry rules for this trade? Like I mentioned, he did not discuss Fibonacci ratios. However, he does discuss one-third to one-half. He says when there's a pullback from C of one-third to one-half, then you, you have a valid um, pattern, what he called one of the best trading opportunities. So here's an illustration. We've combined the volume. We got the I call the WX leg, he calls it the AB leg coming down here, and declining volume. We have a rally into C with increasing volume. Then we have a decline one-third to one-half. That's what he's looking for. So we're really just talking about a 50% retracement. And if you have volume uh, drawing up again on, on this uh, decline here, um, all, all he really said is, is it has to retrace one-third to one-half, and then he said you'd have to put your stop over here at the B point. Those are the original uh, Gartley rules from, from his book. Now, how can we apply the volume rules to our modern uh, trend reversal Gartley? We'll be looking at that in a minute here. But... Um, I just want to show you, here's an example of a trend reversal Gartley, TRG, I call it, a TRG, um, and it's in sugar. And hopefully this doesn't confuse you. I have been using a, a bullish examples, but now I'm going to use a bearish Gartley pattern, a trend reversal Gartley pattern. As you notice, there's been higher highs and higher lows in sugar. We have a W down here uh, on the left, and we have an X at the high. So there's our WX leg. There's a trend up, it looks like, right? And now, after the X, well, uh, pardon me, uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Look at the volume on the, on the bottom here. Remember, Gartley said, we want to see a drying up of volume. So we got the WX leg, and it looks like the volume has dried up on the WX leg. Now, following the WX, we have the XA leg. Now, these are the labels that most people know and love with the Gartley pattern. We have a decline from X to A. If you're an Elliott Wave person, this is like a textbook five-wave sequence on the way down to A. During that move down, we see that the volume has been increasing going into A. The assumption so far is that we did have a trend going up, but it terminated at A, how, or, or pardon me, at X. Uh, the volume has declined, 
and we're thinking that is a high. We have a decline that is significant in price and time compared to the other declines that we've seen, and we're hoping in the Elliott Wave terms that this might be a, a reversal at X, a reversal at this high, significant reversal, and that this is perhaps wave one of a new five-wave impulsive sequence on the way down here. So notice the volume. The volume has increased going into the A label over here. Now, Gartley didn't mention an A, B equals C, D, or he didn't mention a simple A, B, C correction in Elliott Wave terms. He just said that there's, there should be a rally of uh, one-third to 50 percent of the XA move, okay? And we see that. It looks like it's gone past the 50% level. However, um, Garley didn't discuss Fibonacci ratios. Larry Pesvento introduced those uh, ratios. We're grateful to him for that by applying them to the Gartley pattern. Some of the ratios seem to work better than others. If you had to use one all-purpose ratio versus all the others, I'd, I'd recommend if you're going to stick with one, Go with the 78.6. That seems to work the best. And uh, what's good about that is a very deep retracement. So if you were going to put a stop at the uh, end here at X, and you had a 78.6% retracement, we'll see where that is in a moment, the risk is not very much comparatively if you're right on this trade. And if it goes down and makes a wave three, um, your risk is just a little bit. But remember, Gartley's rules for this, this rally that we're seeing here is that volume would decline, and that's what we see on the bottom here. We've got a trend line indicating that volume is starting to dry up again, as he mentioned. Now, looking at, we, we assume that the XA move is a trend down and that this, this rally is now going to be a correction. The most typical tr correction that we're looking for here, the very common Elliott wave one, is the AB or the A equals C, or the A, B equals C, D in this case. So with this, armed with this information, we can do some projections. We, we look at the range of from A to B. We measure that range, and we project it from the end of wave C there. Okay, so we do a price extension. Uh, different software packages call this different things, but we'll just call it simply a price extension. And you can do your price extension. It'll give you an idea as to where the typical end of wave C would be or the, end, uh, the, the point D would be. And then also we'll have to do some Fibonacci retracements. Like I mentioned, I want to do the 786. So one of the tools I like to use to do an end of wave C projection or doing this AB equals CD is the quadrilateral tool. My website is geometrictrading.com. I love market geometry, and I'll share with you something I discovered in writing the Gartley book about the relationship with this and the GAN emblem and how to use that on, on your charts, which you might find interesting. But I like to use the quadrilateral. It gives you a, a better idea in price and time where the, the D point should be with the Gartley pattern. So it's basically telling us the tip of this quad is, is the ideal place where you'll find the D point of the Gartley pattern. So I've done, this is the same as a price projection. If you don't have a quadrilateral tool, you don't have a price projection tool, um, you can, if you go to geometrictraining.com, you can download Market Analyst. There's a 30-day trial that includes the quadrilateral tool. If, if um, you have software that can draw trend lines, you can, you can do this. Simply draw a line from A to B. If you draw a line from A to B, copy that trend line and, and drop it right here at the end of C, and you'll get this um, um, diagonal line that resembles this last line pointing up in, in the quadrilateral. So even if you don't have sophisticated software, you can uh, plot it that way. Okay, so we got a D point projection made. Now we have to apply our Fibonacci retracement levels. And in this case, like I said, I, I, my favorite is the 786. It's a deep retracement. And remember, Gartley said we would be putting our stop just above here. If this really is a wave one and a wave two of an uh, impulsive phase, um, 
we would be dead wrong about that um, if it went above the X point. So that's why we put the stop there. Interesting that the 786 uh, retracement hits this uh, level of resistance. But uh, we can you notice that the end tip of the quadrilateral is landing right beside that 786 level? That's good. If the tip of the quadrilateral is landing closer to another Fibonacci ratio, then it would be a different type of Gartley pattern. If, if the tip of the quad was landing beside the 618% retracement, it would be uh, a 618 Gartley pattern. Um, in this case, it's the 786 retracement uh, Gartley pattern. So the better, it, it's ultimately you want to have the tip of the quad landing right on the Fibonacci level. It doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes it does, but the closer, the better, the more reliable it is. Once again, a reminder, we, with the trend reversal Gartley or the TRG Gartleys, we want to uh, be keeping an eye on the volume over here as it's drying up. Uh, we see that we're, the market's rallying. Sugar's going to rally. Hopefully it hits this uh, 786 retracement. Let's keep going here with our example. So uh, that's exactly what happened. Um, it didn't quite uh, hit the exact price and time um, targets, but it got close. It rallied, and in this case, in the Gartley trading method, I have a number of different entry rules. You can use indicators and oscillators. You can use candlesticks. Uh, however, before any of those things, make sure that it touches the 786% retracement. That has priority over the end of wave C or the, the, the AB equals CD projection. The 786, uh, the Fibonacci level uh, carries the greatest weight. So once it hits that level, now uh, we have a valid bearish trend reversal Gartley. If you like candlesticks, once it touch, touches the uh, retracement level, then look for your fav favorite candlestick reversal pattern. Me personally, I just enter right on the FIB number, um, not, not even waiting for confirmation. At that point, I know exactly what my risk is as I have entered the FIB number and I know where my stop is. It should be above the X point. And uh, just just a, a little tip, um, a lot of traders, but most people like even numbers. If you throw a bunch of numbers out there to somebody and just say, what, what numbers do you like? Remember as kids, we, what's your favorite number? Well, you know what? We still kind of have some of that going on. Use odd numbers because most people don't use odd numbers when trading. So when using stops, uh, just you know, every little tidbit like this can help. So use odd numbers if you can. So we would have been filled there. This is a daily chart. Now, as, uh, in, in the Gartley Trading Method book, I show you how to trade with multiple contracts. My favorite way of getting into this trade is by trading things in, in um, increments of three. So if this was sugar, I'd do three contracts or 30 contracts or 300. And then I would scale out as the market moves in my favor. I'd scale out at specific intervals. We don't really have time to get into it. If this interests you, um, pick up the book. It's, it's quite interesting. But as we all know, risk management is where it's at. You can have a great Gartley trade set up, but you really need to marry it with a, a good risk management uh, method, and, and that's what I've done here. I like to uh, put everything on at the same level. I put my stop on everything up here at the top. In this case, say I'd be a buyer of three contracts at this X um, or at this uh, D point, and I'd put my stop above the X point, and um, I'd have targets. The short-term target, I'd liquidate one. The next one, I'd liquidate another one, and then I'd just use a big loose trailing stop in the last contract. The other thing that I would be doing in this example is I would be, and, and once again, keep an eye on the volume. You notice that the volume hasn't suddenly spiked. It's still um, uh, low volume as we've gone to um, a higher point than what we were looking at in the previous example. Okay, and uh, so let's see how it all turned out.
You notice that the previous chart that we're looking at was a daily chart. One other thing that I like to do is once I have the trade on and I've scaled out to some extent, I still have a third left, and then I change the time frame on, on the chart that I'm trading. And I, in this case, I would have changed from the daily chart to the weekly chart. And once I'm on the weekly chart, I can use a big, loose trailing stop. I have an automated three-bar trailing stop in this example, just a, uh, a, something that looks at market volatility. Uh, Volatility-based stops are really important because what you're trying to do is you're trying, in this case, it would be selling at a volatile area where volatility would be high. You don't want to have tight stops. As it starts to look at this previous high, the market often there will be an increase in volatility and be a little bit more penny foolish in these environments, um, if you will, to uh, make sure that you don't get stopped out and that it goes in the right direction. So, um, yeah, use a big volatility-based stop, um, scale out of the position, and uh, uh, on the weekly chart here, we would have been stopped out over here. Did it turn into a big wave three? No, I'm not going to give you uh, idealized examples, and you'll see that in the book as well. I like to give you ones that work, ones that don't work. For um, the sake of time, we can't really get into um, a whole bunch of examples here, but I just want to give you an example of a bearish Gartley pattern. Trend reversal, reversal Gartley. It's interesting how, the, how this all connects with Elliott Wave and, and GAN. Here's some GAN boxes. And uh, remember that picture that we looked at. We have the WX leg on the way down. And you can see how it conforms to these angles within the boxes. And then we have that rally, the XA rally. And then the B, the C, the D. So if you like market geometry, um, this is what I noticed. The... the the Gartley pattern is, as I've shown you, I've, I've moved uh, on to include geometry, uh, drawing circles and squares and triangles to make this particular trade set, set up even better. I have education on my website at Geometric Trading that, that discusses this a little bit for, further if you, this interests you at all. And uh, also, remember I said with Elliott Wave, if you're simply looking for just a trend followed by a counter trend, you're going to get all these good Elliott Wave trades. Look at this over here. I've taken the liberty. Here's your typical textbook Elliott Wave um, <coughs> scenario where Wave 2, I've taken the liberty of subdividing Wave 2 into a simple ABC correction. I've done the same for Wave 4. I know that there's the, the rule alternation and, and things like that, but um, usually we don't know these things until after the fact. So we're, what I'm trying to do is, is look for that very common, simple ABC zigzag correction um, in relation to the preceding trend move. So I've, I'm showing you here three different Garley patterns. Here's, here's one here at the uh, wave one and two. Here's wave one. We have a rally. And uh, this, this, we're not talking necessarily about trend reversal Gartleys here. We're just talking about the trend continuation Gartleys that most people look for these days. And so here's a trend followed by a counter trend. The counter trend turns into an ABC correction. You're at the end of wave two. Boom, you've got a completion of the Gartley pattern right here. And that sets you up for trading wave three. You uh, get to the end of wave four. Maybe there's a simple ABC correction of wave four. And once again, you have a trend continuation Gartley pattern here. This is a very common Elliott wave trade that people are looking for at the end of wave four. Uh, all we're really doing here is trying to make sure that we have a subdivision ABC, simple ABC correction of wave four. And uh, there's another Gartley pattern. Of course, this is not going to be a deep retracement maybe a 618 or 38.2. There's different types of garlic patterns. Just look for the end of your uh, end of wave C to land on one of those fib numbers. And then finally, we have a massive Gartley pattern that encompasses everything. Just imagine uh, from the beginning of this impulse, from the beginning of wave one all the way to end of wave five, that would be your XA um, 
uh, move in the garlic pound. There's your trend move, followed by a counter trend move. We've got ABC correction down to here, and once again, that would be a 786 retracement of this overall Gartley pattern. We just, the only difference is the XA move is subdivided into a five wave sequence. So we have three Gartley patterns within the context of Elliott Wave. So this is where I go with this is I'm not really concerned about the Elliott Wave count anymore. I just simply look for Gartley patterns. And um, it, it really, at, at, at some point in the book, I, I argue that. Uh, the, the wave count could really be quite irrelevant um, because I can show you how to actually make money when you're wrong with your Elliott wave count. If your wave count reverses, uh, we're trying to find the end of wave C, and after the end of wave C, it typically will move. So uh, that's really what we're trying to do here. Um, if you want to find out more, just uh, grab the book. So let's review what we've covered off. We've got trend continuation Gartleys and trend reversal Gartleys. Trend continuation Gartleys are typically what people see uh, when people talk about Gartley patterns on the Internet. This is typically what they're, they're talking about. What you see in the box here, we see the green leg is a trend and the pink legs are the counter trend. That's even though um, we have the WX leg prior to this. It, it doesn't matter. A trend continuation Gartley is what's focused in on in within this box. To calculate uh, the the trade setup uh, for these types of Gartley patterns, we do a Fibonacci retracement and we do a uh, uh, price extension. If those numbers, those projections land close to each other, then we're good to go. Now, that's a trend continuation Gartley. In the Gartley trading method book, I've identified another Gartley that closer resembles the original Gartley material. And what this includes is this leg that precedes the traditional Gartley patterns that people talk about. And I refer to this as the WX leg. And uh, typically, it looks like a five-wave Elliott wave sequence, some sort of trend move, impulsive trend move that precedes what most people today refer to the Gartley pattern. And remember about volume, that those volume rules are included in the trend reversal garley, or what I call the TRG, trend reversal garley. We're just about to wrap it up here. I just want to share one last thing with you. I, I was saying that uh, when I was writing the Gartley book, I started comparing. Um, I, I wanted to find out how market geometry relates to this pattern. I knew it did, and, and I looked. Remember, we looked at those GAN boxes. How it kind of relates to it. One other thing that got my attention. I talked to Cody Jones, which is Nikki Jones's son, about this, and, and Nikki told me that um, basically, um, um, oh, what's his name? Her husband, who's not with us any longer, who bought Gartley's material. Um, anyways, it, I can't remember. <laughs> Billy Jones. Billy Jones was in San Francisco, and he was thinking about the GAN circle square triangle, and he saw a peace sign button in San Francisco, and it's like, hey, I want to use that circle square triangle, that, that GAN emblem as, as our trademark, which he did. And uh, so you notice here on the left, this is the GAN, GAN's emblem. Uh, the GAN's emblem that a lot of people... Um, uh, recognize that Billy Jones came up with as a, as a uh, to identify his WD GAN publishing company. But I started looking at this and I was thinking, what if you put that on a chart? Because uh, we've I've done some work with circles and squares and triangles on charts. So what if we started taking this emblem and putting it right on the chart? Now you notice on the left-hand side of the square in the GAN's emblem, what it, what if you look over here, this tiny little uh, black arrow in, in the middle example here, what I've done is I've taken that square and I've offset it, and I want to line up that side of the square with the impulsive phase of the Gartley pattern. So you offset the GAN emblem like this, and also you add a couple of more triangles that you can do because of the intersections that are created uh, between the... Uh, triangle on the square, and you can you eventually looks like this, and I refer to this as Beck's emblem. How does it look on a chart? Have a look. I just pulled this off uh, today. Here's the Australian dollar, and uh, once again, there's this would be a trend continuation, Gartley. Over here, here's the 
um, XA move from this low up to the high, the left side of the square. And now we're looking for a simple ABC correction. Uh, looks like it might be wave A, B. Hopefully if it comes down here, we've got to end a wave C. And if it lands, if the, the quad lands right beside one of these angles, that's the angle that we're going to be looking for. Um, so basically this is a little, this is a newer and improved version of the Gartley pattern. As, as, um, and, and this material is in the appendix of my Gartley trading method book. But for the GAN people out there, I thought I'd just want to share that concept with you because it's, I, I'm pretty excited about it, and it's fresh. I know a lot of us have, have uh, seen a lot of technical methods, and, and there's a lot of rehash, so i got some fresh material, material for you. So hopefully you like this. Um, if you, if you want to learn out more about uh, the Gartley, um, grab the book. It's been endorsed by um, a number of different successful traders there on the slide. And uh, also, go to the website, geometrictrading.com. I got a 30-day trial of Market Analyst, which includes the BEX Toolkit. The BEX Toolkit includes BEX Emblem, Gartley Identifier, Gartley, and it includes also the WX. You can scan for um, the trend reversal Gartleys that have the WX leg. Um, so that's free for you if you want to try that. And there's also some education on the website there, too. So uh, with that, I'd like to say thank you very much. And I think I'm uh, one minute over time. And uh, I guess it's time for questions now, Shane. Or Anyone there? <laughs> yeah, Ross, the questions are right down at the bottom in that chat box for you. Okay, so just help myself and start answering your questions. Okay, sounds good. Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, so here's a, a question. How effective is the Gartley trading system in range-bound markets whereby the markets stop trending altogether for long periods? Good question. It works well in the sense that you can have these, um, whether it's a trend continuation Gartley, a trend reversal Gartley, um, we would probably be more inclined to see the trend continuation Gartley's in the range-bound market. We don't need to see the big WX leg prior to it. We look for the XA. As long as we have a, a, a strong directional move followed by a counter uh, trend, um, then we it, it works great in that environment. So, and once again, as I mentioned, uh, you're not risking a lot of money if you get if you put the stop at the X point and you get in with a 786% retracement. That that would be the caveat. I'd, I'd only look for 786 retracements in the range to found market. So if you are wrong, you're not going to go broke. Okay. So another question, can the corrective wave be called impulse? Hmm. Uh, well, that <laughs> I guess that gets into the Elliott wave uh, um, discussion. Um, it's all open to interpretation. When I talk about an impulse, I need uh, I, I don't want to see overlapping waves. Um, I think that's the, the two phases, the corrective phase or the impulsive phase. The, the trademark of the corrective phase is the choppiness, the overlapping waves. So if you see a strong directional move without overlapping waves, we can assume hopefully that's an XA leg. So um, and, and how do we know that? Well, look at the, the market action that follows that. Is it sideways? Is it choppy? Does it look like we've got an A equals C type of formation? Then that, that's fine. Okay. Does the A rally have to exceed the four wave high? Does the A... Okay, now I talked... Don... <laughs> we talked about so many different labels in this presentation. I'm even confused, so I, I'm not sure what A you're talking about here. So I have to skip that one. I'm sorry, Don, and unless you want to clarify it a little bit. Any other questions? Oh, here we go. Yeah. Uh, waiting on additional questions. Sure. Well, I, I get the distinct impression everyone's either thoroughly confused or it was good. So, 
No other questions? Okay. So uh, just a reminder, um, come to the website, uh, geometrictrading.com. If you want to get in touch with me, there's a form there that you can fill out. Um, I also have some free education available for, I call, I'll call it the neophyte level, uh, just general um, a technical analysis meth methods, and, and then after the neophyte level is complete, the initiate level uh, gets more into the material that's covered off in the Gartley Trading Method book. This pattern works very well. I've used it for well over 10 years uh, professionally as well. Uh, I was top-ranked CTA in 2007. Uh, stock index trading based on sharp ratio according to Barclays Trading Group. Um, I, I'm not going to show you anything that doesn't work. Um, I'm not into filler. I know what that's like. Uh, there's a lot of education out there, and sometimes it's hard to sift through it all to, to find out what works and what doesn't. And uh, if this sits well with you, if this kind of resonates with you, and you think there's something here that you can follow, I, just to be honest with you, um, it does. It is difficult to trade because as it retests a previous high or low, uh, especially with those trend reversal Gartleys, it goes against everything that a lot of us have been taught. On, you know, conventional trading wisdom that you don't want to try and catch the falling knife and things like that. Um, so it really is is not for everybody. But if you can, uh, if you're a contrarian and you want to go against the general public opinion of what's going on, that's the only thing I can tell you. Find out what the public's doing. Do the opposite. And most people don't want to trade the Gartley pattern for that very reason. Most people um, are just don't want to take a trade in that situation. So, um, A question from Michael. Do you fear automated systems using the Gartley? Uh, oh, I guess what you're saying is uh, if, this, if everyone automates this, then what happens? Uh, good question, Michael. As I mentioned before, I, I, I like to use this illustration. If you've ever seen Back to the Future, I can't remember, two or three, one of the movies there, where Biff has tomorrow the sports book of all the sports events, and he starts winning because he knows what the future is. And it wouldn't it be great if we had tomorrow's Wall Street Journal, and people say, yeah, you'd make money if we did that, if we had that. But is it possible to lose money if you had that? And the answer is yes, because I think a lot of us have had a great trade setup. Nailed the high or the low to the tick, you're in a position, and then it turns into a loser. We've done that. Why? Because we don't have... Shane has seen Back to the Future 2. That's the one. It, <laughs> that's the one. And uh, we, we can lose money even when we nail it exactly to the tick, right? So that's why it's so important. I didn't really cover off money management here, but I can give you the best trade setup in the uh, universe. I can give you tomorrow's Wall Street Journal, but you can still lose money if you don't have a, that disciplined money management, which is really probably the holy grail of this whole thing. So, no, I am not afraid of automated trading systems using this. And once again, it all comes down to personal preference. We each have our own different style, different risk tolerance, and we're all unique individuals. And I still believe one of the hardest things is to find out what style of trading that you like as an individual. Do whatever you do, don't try to duplicate exactly how I am because you're different from me. Different taste in food and art and music. You gotta find your own way and, and unfortunately a lot of us are simply trying to ride on the coattails of other people. The best traders, hands down, the best traders are those who use their brain and are not afraid to try new things and different techniques. So hopefully uh that's that's um something that you, you apply in your own trading. With that said, I'd like to say thank you very much to everyone at AMTA, especially Shane for putting up with me here, and uh, thank you very much for your questions. And, and uh, if you've got any, any further questions, feel free to contact me through geometrictrading.com. Thank you very much. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Ross for a fantastic presentation. If you've missed any part of this presentation or wish to watch it again, the archive will be available on the MTA website before the end of the week. I do encourage everyone to visit Ross's website at www.geometrictrading.com, and if you have any additional questions, 